Hey everyone, it's Mojax, back in the DJ City UK lab. This week we have another first look at a newly announced Pioneer DJ product. This is the XDJ XZ. Let's get into it. I feel like it's probably important to temper expectations out of the gate with the XDJ XZ. What this unit is not is a full on 4 deck standalone device, which I suspect some DJs will still be hoping to see from Pioneer DJ at some point. The XZ has just two standalone decks when you are playing off USB, and to a degree when playing off a laptop too. No, instead, this is designed to offer what is, quite clearly, the closest thing you can get to a full two-deck Nexus 2 setup at around a third of the price. I've been quite a fan of the all-in-ones that Pioneer DJ have produced in recent years. As someone who's comfortable playing just off a USB stick, they've had enough features to keep myself and a whole lot of other DJs very happy. There's one thing they've always lacked though, and that's the larger jog wheels found on CDJs. Whilst you certainly can scratch with the smaller jogs on something like the XDJ RX2, it's just not quite as comfortable as on those bigger wheels. So let's talk about those first of all. The jogs are 7 inches in size, the same as standard CDJs. They also use Pioneer DJ's mechanical design, where you physically push down on what is effectively a giant switch in order to scratch and cue. This has arguably advantages or disadvantages compared to the capacitive jogs found on things like the RX2, but the crucial advantage is that they feel almost identical to the jogs found on the CDJ2000 Nexus 2s. Like those, these have a tension adjustment dial, so you can tweak the resistance to your own taste, and there's a brake adjustment which lets you change either touch, release, or both on the fly, depending on how you set it in the preferences. The jogs also have the traditional Pioneer DJ illumination around the outside, which doesn't change colour to denote a live deck like on a Nexus 2 rig, but it does flash to warn you that the end of a track is approaching. In the middle of the jogs there are displays which differ slightly from CDJs but not much. They have more in common with those found on the DDJ1000, displaying both artwork and a playhead indicator. There's also another mode which wasn't turned on by default on my unit, which is why it's not shown in most of this video, Info Mode. This gives you an overview waveform as well as key, time, BPM and artwork exactly like on the 1000. I'm actually in two minds about whether I would use that mode. All of that info is already displayed very close at hand on the main display, making it seem a little redundant, but it's great to have the option. Most of the rest of the deck sections have much in common with Nexus 2 hardware also. Cue, play, pause, the pitch control, sync, reverse, memory cues, and looping are all laid out in pretty much the same way and do the same things too. As someone who spent hundreds of hours using Nexus and then later Nexus 2 players over the years, I felt immediately at home on the XZ decks and I'm sure the same will apply the other way round. Where the XZ does deviate from the CDJ lineup is with the pad section. In standalone mode, you have four modes for those hot cue, beat loop, slip loop, and beat jump. These are all available on the Nexus 2 players, but apart from hot cues, are tucked away inside the touchscreen. The pads have the now traditional Pioneer DJ feel and are very responsive. It might take users a little while to remember which pad does which in the beat modes, but on the whole, pads are definitely a more user friendly way of doing things, which I think people will enjoy. We move up to the screen then, which is also quite familiar, but instead from the RX2 instead of CDJs. Standalone Pioneer DJ playback is pretty much the same across all their recent devices, so there isn't much to trip people up. Track browsing and sorting is all standard stuff, with lots of different ways to display and work with your files, plus you have the shortcuts and everything as well. The only real change to muscle memory from CDJs is that when you click the navigation knob to load a deck, you have to choose which one. There are also dedicated track load buttons for each deck if you prefer. Once you have tracks loaded, you have stacked parallel waveforms, as well as a smaller overview waveform down below next to the track information. Over on the right hand side is all the info for the effects section, which we'll get onto now. The whole mixer section in use feels very similar to a DJM 900 Nexus 2, and again, that's a very good thing. So much of feeling comfortable on gear relates to muscle memory, not having to look at controls to use them, and here the XZ excels. Faders, color effects, EQs, beat effects, cueing, all of these are where my hands expected them to to be, and they work in much the same way. Some settings which are found externally on the Nexus 2, like Split Q, Crossfader Curve and EQ Type, are tucked away inside the utility menu instead, but they aren't things you're likely to change often, so that's all good. Effects are pretty much the same as the Nexus 2, both in selection and quality. I'll go more into those in my actual review, but effects are one of the big reasons why Pioneer DJ's flagship kit has become the de facto club standard over the years, and the XZ is absolutely on a par with that gear. 
A quick look at the connections on the unit, which point to the XZ being designed to be used in professional environments. There's an IEC power connector, no wall warts required. Then there are two mic inputs, both with combo XLR, jack sockets, separate level controls, three band EQ and talk over options. There's also an adjustable feedback reducer, which I'm keen to test. Then you have an AUX input on RCAs with its own level control and two pairs of RCA inputs, phono and line for the outer two channels, three and four. More on the channel situation in a moment. In terms of outputs, there is an unbalanced send output, which appears to be designed for the DJS 1000 sampler. There's no regular send and return loop on here. You then have master two on unbalanced RCAs, master one on balanced XLRs and booth output on balanced jacks with its own level control up top. It's nice to see that there is a three band EQ on the master, which can also be assigned to the the booth in the utility menu. Master EQs have largely disappeared from DJ gear in the last 20 years, but they can be so useful when trying to tame an unruly sound system, so they're always welcomed by me. We move on to the digital connections and this is where things get really interesting. On top there are two USB-A ports allowing you to connect two drives or sticks for standalone use. As on the RX2, this not only allows easy changeovers between DJs, but the second one of these can also be used for direct master recording in great quality, whilst even playing from the same media. All the music you hear me playing in this video was recorded via that method. Then around back you have a USB-B port designed to hook up to a computer. This works in three ways, you can use it for pro DJ link with with record box running in export mode or with record box performance mode which turns the XZ into a controller or with Serato DJ Pro but not quite yet. Yes, like the recent DDJ XP2, the XZ comes with both Rekordbox and Serato logos on it, which makes me very happy indeed. The more cross-platform support in the industry, the better as far as I'm concerned. Sadly, the Serato DJ Pro software support isn't available at the time of making this video, but it will be along with a firmware update to enable it in the coming months. I need to spend a bit of time with the software side of things in Rekordbox to really get my head around it, I think. It comes with a performance license for the software and it does support DVS, but you'll need to by the extra license for that. However, although the XZ has four mixer channels, only the outer two have any inputs, and the software automatically routed my turntables to the two main decks in record box. The big thing to note is that the deck sections on the XZ do not have deck selection switches, so unless Pioneer DJ and Serato add something to their software, there doesn't seem likely to be any way to control decks three and four from the unit itself. As I say, something I will have to play with more. What is very cool about the third and fourth channels is the Ethernet hookups. There are three on the rear, one for extension, which you would use to connect your computer in export mode instead of over USB, and two for channels three and four. This means you can hook up one or two single XDJ or CDJ players to the XZ and have the whole lot running together through the mixer section, all connected via Pro DJ Link. You could also have the DJS 1000 connected there instead of a player and have all of your samples syncing up with the XZ. I'll have to get my hands on some other Pro DJ Link hardware and really dive deep into that. So I guess you could be asking, who is the XDJ XZ actually for? Well, I can see a few different demographics going for this one. Firstly, for DJs who play out using Nexus 2 hardware at gigs and want a very similar experience when practicing at home without completely breaking the bank, the XZ could well be the dream. At a street price of around $2,300, it's not much more than a third of the price of a pair of CDJ 2000 Nexus 2s and a DJM 900 Nexus 2, with not far off the same functionality. So it seems like quite a bargain by comparison. Comparison. That pricing could also mean it appeals to some mobile DJs who want the big imposing stature of a CDJ rig but without the expense. The unit also has some nods to mobile jocks with those two fully featured mic inputs too. But I think possibly the biggest market for the XDJ XZ will be those smaller venues like bars and pubs who don't have the budget for a full Nexus 2 rig but still care about their DJs. The XZ looks like it will make a fine centerpiece of a booth in that kind of venue, offering standalone playback with easy switchovers, record box and Serato support for laptop users and the ability to hook up turntables or even extra media players should that be needed. So there you go, a first look at the XDJ XZ from Pioneer DJ, a very interesting device, but again, it's a first look. I've only just got my hands on it. I'm not getting away from proper reviews here on the channel. You know, Pioneer DJ, they release a lot of stuff and I like to show it to you because I'm excited by it and I think you guys and girls are probably excited about it as well. So that's where all these first looks are coming from, but we will continue on with proper, detailed, honest reviews. The DDJ 1000 SRT is next on the slate. That will be the next episode that you see from me and I'll be giving you a full detailed review on this in a few weeks time. Thank you for watching today. Make sure you subscribe and you hit that bell icon down below to get notified anytime there's a new video from myself or the rest of the DJ City team. 
I'll see you soon.